Cougan Cash Society TV in association with MTK Global. We're at Bramble Lane here for press conference for Grove Student Off, Brooke Spence. I'm joined by trainer Shane McGuigan. How you doing? All right, mate? Yeah, good, mate. Yeah. Great turnout. Absolutely. Great venue. Looking forward to Saturday night. Great main event. Even better co main event, as you want to call it, or undercar fight. So I'm looking forward to it. I feel like, you know, George is. He's looked brilliant in the gym and since working together, this is our big moment now. So go out there, it's good, you know, people have sort of let it go under the radar and maybe that's, a, maybe that's a blessing. So we can just prepare, keep our heads down and go out there and win that world title. Full shot of the world title, much publicised uh, for George Groves. Is this his last chance to win a world title in your opinion or is that hard to answer? I mean, you can say that, the last roll of the dice, but you know, he's been in there with Carl Froch on two occasions, someone that's... You know, a, a great fighter, and then he, he went in there as favourite against Badu Jack, lost on a split decision, got dropped early, got back up, overcame a lot um, to go on and to go on and make it a very close fight. If you look at the likes of James the Gale, dropped Badu Jack early, and then it was completely different. You know, he went on, struggled, 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 and then got dropped heavy in the last round. So everyone sort of said to George, "Ah, oh, Badu Jack was an easy fight." And, you know, and now Fedor Chudnov's an, an easy fight, but you know, it's this is our, our last crack at the whip in terms of for a world title. I feel you know, you, you got you've got to give yourself that. You know, he's got to have that mentally so he can go in there and, and give it his best. And you know, obviously there's huge fights out there afterwards, but we're we're only focused on on one fight, and, and that's winning on Saturday night. It was always our always our goal is to win a world title. When we started working together, we stuck with the WBA. Um, you know, the super middleweight division has changed massively in the last sort of couple of months. Badu Jack, James DeGale was a draw, and James DeGale was asking for a fight with George, and he thought he was going to get, a, James DeGale thought he was going to get a fight with Callum Smith, defend his, both his titles, that didn't materialise. Callum Smith has got um, the WBC, Anthony Durrell, so it's all, it's all sort of turned on its head, but we've just stuck with the WBA and, and they've came through and and hopefully we get this this win on Saturday night and then huge fights and domestically in the Super Mario Division. Definitely will be. That was rolled into one, Super Mario Division. <laughs> Sounded all right, though. So. Um, any updates on Carl Frampton? Um, yeah, I mean, we'll, we'll have updates soon. Um, we're just, we're working behind the scenes, not on Twitter. We're working behind the scenes to, uh, as a dig to Eddie. Uh, to get to get the fight, you know, uh, that we want, and there's there's two options for Carl: either jump in at world level or, or have a sort of tune-up fight and and go again uh, um, in the sort of October sort of time. So we'll have news soon. Um, in Belfast? Look, yeah, that's that's what we want. I mean, that's one of the reasons why it's taken so long is to get the right opponent to come over because he he's adamant he wants to fight there. He doesn't want to go out to America. Santa Cruz doesn't want to come anywhere near even England he won't come to England so we've given him all the options we possibly could so uh, we, we've got to find another opponent so we'll, we'll have news soon on that. Any updates about David Hay and his progress we've seen some videos that he's posted on social media uh, looking like it's going to be a slow road but he's on that road. It's like Wolverine isn't he? he recovers real quick um, but look, I'm, I'm, me and, he hasn't been in the gym me and him have been obviously talking, chatting away, but uh, he knows I've got, since since his fight, the focus has gone on to George Groves and and uh, he sort of hasn't been in the gym training, but I know he's sort of doing his conditioning back over at his place and it's, it's a long, slow process. I think it's sort of six months before he can get back to full intensity in, in the training, so hopefully he can, you know, hopefully he can make a full recovery and go again and avenge that defeat to Tony Bully. Unlikely we'll see him this year then, with what you're saying. You're asking the wrong person. You're his trainer, so I'm not really. No, you're asking the wrong person in the sense like, you know, we haven't even started training. I can't, uh, you, you can never know how his body's going to hold up. He's got his own management team, he's got his own promotion, so ask the wrong person. Um, one fight is happening on July the 8th, yeah. is uh, the eagerly anticipated clash between uh, I'm beating Josh Taylor and I'm beating O'Hara Davies and um, it was a Great bit of a fight. surprise uh, when it was announced and we sort of saw a little bit of the Twitter exchange uh, which he kind of led into this. He exposed me, but 
he, listen, he's got a fight made. And he's, O'Hara Davies has bravely come up to Scotland and he's come onto another platform. Um, we, we, you know, we, we didn't really want to do it on an undercard of a pay-per-view fight, to be honest, and let it go. But, you know, was it about it being on the undercard or was it about it, no, no. Uh, Josh Taylor fighting on one no, of Eddie Hearns? No, it wasn't, it wasn't anything to do with that. Listen, we know, you know although we got all this beef with Eddie, we, it's business at the end of the day. We know that we're going to have to work with Eddie in the, in the future and we have worked with him in the past. But it's just about making it right. You know, you can either have it on terrestrial television as a headline in a relatively big uh, uh, arena and one of the fighters goes on to become a superstar and the other one dwindles into the dust. That's the way we look at it. Well listen, either way the fight's made and uh, made. it'll get great viewing figures and I'm sure it'll yeah. cause a lot of interest start with the press conference. For free? Absolutely, yeah. uh, on Tuesday so... No, that's going to be good. That's what I, don't wanna, I don't wanna talk too much about it because obviously I want, I want it to sort of build up and, yeah, of and, and give them their, their say on Tuesday. Both fighters are, <laughs> are really excited about it. Yeah. Excited to see what O'Hara Davies says and excited to see how Josh Taylor fights back in. Have you seen uh, the top 10 list? Have you seen this list? Uh, what is that? The top 10 most likely to chin Eddie Hearn. Have you seen the list going about? No, where is it? I don't know. There's a quiet. There's, I think you, your dad, Carl, all on the list as well. Yeah, it's online somewhere. It will somewhere. happen in one, in one day. It will happen. <laughs> but it's all about the surprise. Surprise element. <laughs> no, it's right. been many, many days I've wanted chin in, but maybe you'll get, yeah, maybe you'll get iced by someone who's completely unknown. Maybe a fan will come out and ice him one day. But it'd be funny when it does happen. Shane McGuigan, thank you very much for talking to uh, Cheers, RFL TV and um, we'll catch up with you next week at the press conference. Cheers, mate. Thank you.